Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, let's talk about trust. Uh, to begin with, uh, maybe I can provide you with my credentials. Um, good way to begin, right? <laughs> Um, so I work with Santander. Uh, Santander, is, I'm there, I'm the global head of, of identity. Um, if you don't know Santander, it is a very big bank, 144 million customers based in Spain, but global. Uh, before that, I was global head of uh, APIs at AIG. Before that, I uh, helped uh, found the company a NPM Inc. Um, who here uses Node, NPM? Just a few, okay, good. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I helped bring in the Node project at Joyent, um, helped raise 100 million for them. Uh, before that, I was with Ernst & Young at the Financial Services Advisory Practice, which is centered just down the street. And before that, I was uh, Derivatives Quant at Wells Fargo. So I know a little bit about uh, finance, and I know a little bit about open source. Um, and all of that means that I value trust. So. We have a problem. Um, in our digital world, we lack trust. Uh, these days, trust is very hard to find. Facebook recently announced that this year alone, they have had to delete 5.4 billion, with a B, billion accounts. That's more accounts than they have. Over the course of the year, two-thirds of it is fake. Um, they say at any one point in time, 5% is fake, but it's enormous. And the number of fake accounts that they're deleting is growing quarter by quarter, just as the damage being done by those fake accounts is growing. We have another problem, privacy. McKinsey says that 33.8% of all fraud globally is identity theft and account takeover. So anybody with a bank, anybody working at a bank, this is one of your key issues. This is one of your biggest problems. As banks, for the folks that are with banks, we also have another problem. The problem is potential total disintermediation. Who controls identity? Who verifies who people claim to be? Who owns your data? Do you own it? Is somebody a trusted custodian taking care of your data? Or Potentially, is it something else? If it's something else, as banks, if it's big tech codes, we face total disintermediation. And total disintermediation, it's not like total recall. It's more like Terminator. I think that's not gonna be good for anybody. So, can we help? Well, oh, I gotta go back one. That's too bad. There we go. Um, maybe it's a coincidence she's wearing Santander red. Anybody remember the 1984 commercial? Um, uh, because banks can help, um, and they, they definitely have helped historically. Banco de Medici, um, since the time of the founding of the first major global bank, we have been helping. Uh, we funded trade. We set up letters of credit. We helped fund the library that built the Renaissance, that created the demand for the printing press, that funded Michelangelo, that led to the Enlightenment, that led to math, that led to science, that led to history, and then there was a big bang. <laughs> well, a big bank, anyway. And if it comes from a big bank, it means that we can solve the problem of digital trust. Banks protect privacy. You know about ancient things like doctor-patient privilege. You know about lawyer-client confidentiality. These are not things that have just arrived in the last 25 years since the advent of HTML. No, these are old things, just like bank customer privacy. And there are huge regulations around it. We all are dealing with all of these regulations. They're very serious. They're a big part of our lives. We take our fiduciary responsibility very seriously. If Congress asks us to show up or any other government asks us to show up, we show up. And customers appreciate it. 71% of customers trust banks with their personal information. This is more than anything else out there, more than any digital entity, any of them. So being regulated 
doing all the things that we have to do gives us an advantage. So how do we use that advantage? How do banks help our clients prosper? How do we help build digital trust? Let's go through some ideas. One idea would be to go with something like Bank ID in the Nordics. Anybody familiar with it? The Nordics, well, seriously, I mean, life is just better in the Nordics. <laughs> it's great, but it requires good government. And on the world stage, getting agreement is more difficult. And they have maybe more pressing concerns, climate, war, famine. So maybe let's go with a market-based solution if we're looking for a global solution. One idea is to go with one company. And I love these diagrams because, whoop, I'm past it. In the diagrams, that means the one company is sitting in the middle making all the money, um, which is great. I mean, it worked for the brilliant Mr. Bloomberg. Um, and I like Mike. I think he's great. But I'm sure we can solve the the whole problem of digital trust without manufacturing another brilliant billionaire. So maybe we can get some guidance from the market. What's the, the market telling us? Uh, we talked to some matching engines, uh, matching engines that connect a buyer and a seller either sides of a party, eBay, Airbnb, Uber. They all said the same thing. Oh, this is great. You can verify, you can give me verified sellers, verified buyers, you can give me verified renters, uh, you can give me verified landlords. You can help us to accredit who the people are on the platform. Fantastic. But we don't want to integrate once with Santander and then in a completely different format with somebody else and then a completely different format with yet another company. What the market wants is a standard. Makes sense, right? Okay, so what this tells us is no bank can go it alone. No bank can impose their solution and hope that the rest of the world adopts it. We have to work together. If banks build just their own solution, they're gonna end up with a really nice store in a ghost town. And standards work. Look at HTML. Look at TCP IP. Can banks make a standard? How many folks know about FPML, Financial Product Markup Language? Cool, my, my derivatives peeps. Um, ICE LIBOR, great standard central to all of our major financial contracts these days. Eurodollar futures, another big standard, helps us to hedge everything. Big part of how we add more stability to the market these days. So at Santander, we're doing a research project. Um, they told me to keep it stealth. So no tweets. Um, the trusted counterparty protocol, or the trusted counterparty protocol for ID. That's our working title, I don't know, maybe we change it. But right now it's TCP for ID. And what it's supposed to tell you with that little homage is that it really is a standard. There's no central group, there's no central organizing entity, there is instead just a standard we can all use. It's built on top of open ID. It's really easy to conceptualize. There's somebody who holds identity, they go to a reliant party, they say, hey, I wanna check into your hotel. And the hotel says, give me your passport. And the person says, no, you're Marriott, and last time you lost my passport, along with 100 million other passports. So, uh-uh. How about I verify with my bank? And the message gets sent to the bank, the person um, checks in with the bank, the bank uses their existing identity and access management system. This is what I run for Santander. I know you all have it, it's easy to run, it's easy to extend with this uh, system. And then the message gets sent off to the hotel. It's a little bit like outsourcing uh, PCI compliance, for example. So well, what do we have today? We have code, real code. Um, come to our session, we're, uh, we're going on in, on I think it's stage two at uh, 3.10 this afternoon. Um, join us. You'll hear from Ildefonso Almedo. Um, uh, he's the Director of Innovation at Santander UK. He's responsible for research and development, for proofs of concepts, and delivering new high-profile innovation programs. This is one of them. Um, you'll hear for, from uh, Alberto Polito. I think I left a spelling mistake in there. I forgot the I, I apologize. 
Alberto. <laughs> um, he's the technical expert behind the standard. Uh, you met Bjorn Strostrop earlier. Um, I've worked with uh, the people who created NPM. Alberto's on the same level. The guy's a genius, and what he's building with his team is really, really interesting. And what we'll implore you to do afterwards is to join us. We're creating a working group. We're working towards open sourcing all of this, working with our colleagues in other banks to create something that fundamentally changes the nature of digital trust. I think we'll be able to completely change the way people interact online. I think it'll help make uh, commerce more secure. I think it'll help us to trust each other better. I think it'll also have an impact when it comes to things like our discourse. You can reach out to us at sandlabs at santander.co.uk. And that's it. Thank you very much.